very good morning, all of you. Um, well, I think, uh, first of all, uh, it's great to have this conclave. Um, it was something uh, which has been on my mind for many years, rather, that uh, coaches um, in our country and coaching framework in our country needed to uh, change. And uh, after a lot of deliberations and putting across to many a people, I think uh, Go Sports uh, was the one, Nandan, and we worked tirelessly for many hours, exchanging a lot of uh, mails, trying to push through many changes in the format at the national level. And uh, hopefully, we've reached one step with Sai uh, raising the um, salaries of coaches. I think that's been a very healthy one. Um, but I think there's a lot more to be done, uh, nonetheless. I think. Um, very happy to be here, uh, see a lot of um, uh, eminent coaches here, uh, players, who uh, great players here, um, fitness trainers. I think it's fantastic uh, to see uh, all of you present here. Also from Sai, I can see uh, Sata Madam and all. I think it's really wonderful to see. I'll, I'll uh, just put my uh, uh, story uh, to you. Um, it might sound strange because um, as much as um, I have succeeded in my career, I think um, there was very likely chance that I wouldn't have won that All England and probably the story wouldn't have happened at all. Um, probably for many of us, um, praise or blame is a thought after uh, the victory. And at the time, it's only when I was playing, it was only the earnestness and the love for the sport which really mattered. I love to play the sport, why I took up the sport. Uh, and I love to continue to be associated and love the sport. That's why I continue to be uh, there playing and coaching and being associated th with the game today. That, that is the fundamental thing. As a sports person, I started my career in 86. Uh, my parents had uh, uh, put me in the sport just because I was uh, playing outside too much. They said, why doesn't he go indoors and play? Because I was getting sunstroke playing cricket and breaking window panes. And uh, once I uh, started playing, I just wanted to play better than the guy who, was, who started together with me. And I wanted to be the best in the stadium and then the best in the state. And when I played the nationals, I thought I had a chance to be the national champion. Um, yeah, I, I think that's how it was. AP was not a great uh, state then. Um, and uh, even to get to the nationals and uh, play a couple of rounds was a big ask. But uh, I wanted to play better and better each time. And that's how I played from state to the nationals. I remember Shama is here. I don't know if she remembers Shama and upper uh, Archana's match. I was uh, doing linesman and uh, the Manipur Nationals. <laughs> I, I remember uh, Roshan Lal sir uh, firing uh, the Karnataka team in the Chennai Nationals. <laughs> Me having lost the first round to a guy from Marisa. That is how my journey was. So today to talk as though this whole thing was uh, predetermined or I had some knowledge that I wanted to be. And Sharda is here. I remember one press statement saying that um, of, of another newspaper actually saying that uh, from the media that when I picked up the racket, I dreamed that I would be an All England champion, which is never the case. <laughs> Till I got my first job, I didn't even have an idea that I would continue playing before that. Nor uh, till I lost my engineering exam, I don't uh, think that I would have continued playing the sport from uh, then on. But I think the great, uh, the whole story went. Uh, I was very fortunate, I would say, that um, I had uh, Hamid Hussain, sir, who was my first coach initially. Um, he was a great guy. Um, I know many would say that he didn't have many much knowledge of the sport, but he was somebody who really loved loved me genuinely. And uh, I remember still, uh, I went to play the under 12 nationals in Delhi for the first time I was going alone. Uh, he just bent over, gave me a good hug and a kiss on my cheek and said, play well. And that's, I still remember that for the affection which he gave. And that really made me want to come to the stadium. I think that's uh, 
that was those initial years which was very important for me post that i had the discipline um, and hard work put into me by somebody called arif sa arif sa was a great motivation for me he really pushed me to work hard and he was very strict on discipline i think that went off very well then i moved here i was very fortunate that prakash sir was contemplating to start coaching and um, i moved here to bangalore and he was there and uh, i spent about 3 to 4 years with prakash sir vimal was also part of the coaching team my friend lancy is also here we are all part of uh, that group and then uh, i think i was in sai uh, ganguly prasad um, sir i spent um, a few years there and with fantastic knowledge of the sport um, i was very fortunate that in my career i had all these coaches who really helped me um, once i finished off um, in a way i was lucky because thanks to the all england win i could dream i could dream of setting my own academy up i went to the chief minister and said i want to start an academy and uh, he said you should and um, what does it need i said i need a running track and uh, i need some land uh, he says okay you take this land and uh, it was kind of on the outskirts of the city then i said i don't uh, i would rather have a small piece of land in because i don't think i can really um, and many people would come there as what i said but unfortunately we didn't have much of the prime land so i got this piece of land in gachibauli today probably the best place in hyderabad uh, it turns out to be that's another lucky part but having said that what i only thought of when i won the all england was um, and i had some i was somebody who's never trained abroad and neither did i want to train abroad really i i was happy training in india the one thing which i always did was i didn't want to complain i said whatever i had was good enough is what i thought and that really helped me because i never felt in my entire career that i have never gone to somebody and asked for a sponsorship in my entire career for the simple reason that i thought whatever is there is enough to win and it is me who has to do it and it's not about the facilities which was there and that really helped me so when i finished off my career my only thought was if i could do it training in india i am sure with facilities everybody could do it and that's the single most important reason why i started coaching there was no money i think there was a great dream but there was no support nobody else was believing in this dream today when we talk about say three men in the top 15 of the world two women in the top 10 of the world a men's doubles players women's doubles players in the top 15 of the world today everybody says okay but then when we talked of an olympic medal they thought it was something like a 2032 or something because it looked a very very distant dream but i jumped into it as in my career as a badminton player i didn't know what to do but i jumped into it in the same way i started coaching i jumped into it the day i won the all england i forgot i was the all england champion post that in this is the day i started coaching rather i forgot that i was the all england champion now my entire focus was that how would i i make the next kids start winning april 13th 2004 had a bunch of about 25 kids whom i started to start coaching um me with no formal education into coaching um the kids had only trust in me and thanks to my stature as an all england champion it really helped because what i told 
was engraved in stone to say. So they trusted me totally, 100%. So I had in this group um, a Sindhu who was eight years old, who was the youngest, a Kashyap who was about 15, who was the oldest, and in between we had a Saina, we had a Guru Sai Dat, we had a Sai Pranit, we had a Sumit Reddy, we had a Sikki, who, uh, we had Tarun. This was that entire bunch which I started coaching in 2004. And I only knew one thing that if I could do, do it with all my constraints, they should be able to do it much faster than I did. Because my biggest grievance was that when I was 27, I won the All England. Had I won it at 21 or 20, I would have had maybe seven years of badminton left in me. And that made me really push them to ensure that they reach their top at the youngest stage so that they have enough time to trip, fall down, get up, tie their laces and go back and run again. So that's the fundamental belief which I had. And when I said to the players then they could do it, they really uh, believed me and that was the biggest advantage I had. Initial years we got 10 lakhs of funds from the government which I exhausted in about 10 months because we employed a coach and then post that we never got any money from the government. But I had started coaching. I had no, no way forward uh, other than, only way forward other than to stop coaching. The kids were the focus, so I don't know how much money came from me, how much, uh, sh how many, how much time came from me, how many shuttles came from me, but it's just that if they needed shuttles, I would get shuttles. If they needed supplements, I would get supplements. If they needed coach, I would get a coach. If they needed a physio, a trainer, everything, we kept going, going. 2004, five, six went in that direction. In 2006, I was appointed the chief coach. We started to have national camps in Hyderabad. Some relief, but a lot of problems as well. 215 rupees was given for accommodation, food, transport, and clay all put together. So I had to do my bit. We struggled to get um, funds to continue to pay any of the coaches. But then there was some amount of support. So basically what we at the academy started to do was we tried to bridge fund everything in the sense we got something, we tried to get another sponsor, I put my money. So I just didn't count of it as another thing. I just thought the whole thing was like a family, big family. And I just kept putting in all those things. Great help for me uh, to Build the academy was my parents. They were phenomenal in the sense uh, we would uh, all meet up in the morning. I started coaching initially at 8 o'clock in the morning. Then a player would start to play well. Then we moved to another session of personal training. I would come at 7 o'clock. Then another player would play well. Then we started coming at 6 to the point that we start, I start my day to day at 4 o'clock in the morning. So. But then the greatness was that results were starting to come. There was enough push happening and I could see that we were closing in. Not many could see what was happening, but I could see it. There was somebody who committed about two crores. Uh, his name is uh, Matrix Prasad. They call him Matrix Prasad. Uh, his name is Nimagadda Prasad. That's how we started the academy. We started the foundations midway through, um, funds dried up. I went to corporates, stood in front of, uh, literally stood in front of their rooms. As a badminton player, you have that privilege of, um, of signing autographs, being in pictures as a celebrity, kind of are pampered with these things all your life and then suddenly people stop taking your calls 
people don't reply back to you you're waiting outside offices and then the tough calls were in the sense no money the building needed to be built i was very fortunate that my parents stood there literally my dad stood there i remember him standing there for a 24 hour period when the slabs were being done literally almost eating with the uh, laborers there and then everybody would get food i would come after the training session we would all sit there and literally brick by brick we built that academy i would go out to corporates ask them for funds somebody said gopi if you want personally something i'll be happy to help you but this is not happening and the sense india is never going to be a big country i have seen you i really like you you're a great guy but uh, it's not happening so i'll give you 5000 rupees somebody told me i'll give you 5000 rupees for an for an advertising board and then i went back home um i had my that is one of the days which i actually had tears in my eyes i went back home after waiting for 3 days in an office somebody told me that badminton doesn't have the eyeballs to be a sport world sport i went back i had tears in my eyes i called up my uh, i called my parents and i called my mother father my wife and said i can't do this anymore we don't have funds but we need to finish it so we've got this house are you ready to sell it and they said yes and that was the greatest uh, support i had because the next day we mortgaged the house we got another 3 crore uh, loan for it luckily we didn't have to sell it uh, i couldn't get a loan on my academy because it was a leased land so we had to do it on my own house and uh, luckily my parents agreed my wife agreed and then we went on to actually take that and build the academy that is how we actually jumped in to do that and finish that and today what we see is probably that decision which we took otherwise we would have just been waiting there for this entire thing to happen then we had to fight a battle with the government to save the land that's another story the, now the government suddenly thought that it was important that uh, they build uh, service apartments there and they took out the land on a friday evening i get a court case saying that the land should be taken back uh, because they want to prepare uh, some service apartments and a hotel there and i went to court got a stay order and we fought the government for another one and a half year so that's the other challenge of it but i think having said that i think what the f- to be honest to put things forward i think uh, as i have said if in terms of knowledge i would put a lot of coaches in the sport better than me as well but if i had something it was that desire to help desire to keep pushing and um, take one day at a time because disappointments came but in all these things which have happened say from 2004 till 2015 today one thing which i'm really proud of that at the back end the support mechanism which we've been able to do was that none of the players till date at the academy can will say that we have missed a single session of training for lack of either coaches or trainers or shuttles or courts none of these things so at the back end in spite of what was happening at the front we ensured that there was this continuous support which was happening and that for me was the greatest um greatest success of the academy's uh, backbone to say it i think we are immensely talented the players are very hard working all we need to do is put a decent system around them and they will shine we have a great great kids great talent all we need to do is ensure that we need to not stop it and give it that little bit of push and they will shine on their own is what i would say the journey has been tough it's had challenges on the side one of the things i realized was that we need to give them um uh, tournament exposure which was important so on the sides as they grew and this was 
put in to me by a friend of mine uh, who was the managing director of the Sports Authority of India, uh, sorry, Sports Authority of Andhra Pradesh, LV Subramaniam. Uh, he had said, Gopi, we should try and conduct tournaments. So if our players are A-level, we should just have B-level tournaments. And if our players reach the B-level, we should have C-level tournaments. So simultaneously, we started conducting tournaments in India in Hyderabad. And we managed to do a satellite event in 2004, the um, India Open GP in 2005, 2006, we had the Asian Championships, 2007, we had the Indian GP Gold, till in 2009, we have the World Championships. So parallelly, we were conducting these tournaments. So that was another struggle. So I was, um, yeah, I think this is something which I'll also share because um, I think uh, I would, um, I would say that this was also instrumental in um, my becoming involved with the association, with organization, with coaching and framework, because just coaching was not good enough. It was important to be associated with the association because that had the control to ensure that the tournaments could be in, in the schedule which they need to be that control was important. So I was involved in the association. I was involved as a chief coach. I was involved in this. So this actually got a lot of criticism from various quarters in the sense people wouldn't understand why I was getting into three or four of these segments. But I think for a player to develop, I think it's very important that the coach has the ultimate control on all of these things. And in India, unless you get into those things, it's not possible to be in control of what the associations are doing. Because one primary example, and I think all of us, and, and this is something which I always uh, have been quoting as, we've had such enthusiasm for our Asian uh, Games athletes to come back and the government giving them the check for winning those medals immediately. In the next day, they really gave those checks. But nobody really cared to check whether the coaches got any of the money or the physios got any of the money or the support staff got anything till date. And it's the case that many of the Olympic medals winners their coaches also haven't got the money, and it's like four years. Now, who takes this cause up is an issue. But today, the position of coaching is in such a state that he has to bow down before the association. He has to bow down before the administrator of the stadium because he controls the lights, he controls the lawns, he'll, he'll water it, he will do it at his own time, not caring about the um, coaching part. The gym guy, whether he wants to open it, it's on Sunday, it's an off, it's a government holiday, it's an off, it's a Diwali, it's an off. You have a lot of those issues coming up. So unless you are in control of many of these things, it is not possible. And today with under SAI, under Sports Authority of say Karnataka, under the uh, various district associations and then you have press media also. And sometimes now with a lot of things happening where the player is in charge, now the coach is under the player because actually many of the times you're dependent on your stature because of the player's recommendation. And that makes the coach actually work under the player as well. This is really a sad scenario which is happening. And unless this is reversed, I think much of coaching really can't help. Because at the end of the day, when we are coaching, it's very important that we have a control of their training schedules, their basic attendance for training sessions. But today, if they're working in an organization, we don't have control. The organization says you have to play an X tournament. The coach has no control over that. There's a school, school exams, we don't have control over that. The association says 
he has to go somewhere and he is your coach you don't have to you don't have a control over that so many of these aspects actually take away the coach's rights and more importantly the coach's spirit because unless you have the spirit you really the coach is nothing because today if you want to learn and if you want to give this enough and more avenues for us to learn and give but if you kill the spirit the earnestness to learn is lost and you really left with nothing you're just going through the motions and your really your heart is not in the sport and that for me is the biggest thing in the sense we can have and today the focus is on revamping and every time i go uh, for a meeting they're talking about better coaches education but all of coaches education is only a seed because whatever he is taught is not good enough because the world is changing science is changing and unless you are ready to learn differently and adapt and the earnestness to learn is what makes you a better coach but then you you're thinking that we'll produce the best of the seed put it into an environment which is so unsafe that it will never germinate never grow into a big plant big tree because you've killed you've killed it by putting so many obstacles to it and after a few years coaches are basically going through the motions okay it doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter okay um i think uh, more than that i think uh, my learnings have been that um, i think from my perspective i would put it i've been very fortunate to, to say that i had a bunch of kids who really believed in me i had the environment which was uh, conducive because i was in control of that environment and um, other than that i don't think that um, in terms of i i was of course uh, ready to go that extra mile forgetting the ego aspects or the uh, the level of an all england champion and stuff because i get this um back home sometimes uh, my wife is actually like oh, you you don't have to do this and this and i'm like going for a kid on 5 o'clock in the morning on a sunday or just to wait for them to stretch or tell them that you need to go out there and following them to ensure that they don't uh, they're sleeping them on time sleeping on time or eating properly then sometimes the commander like you don't have to do this like it's not your stature but i think we need to forget that and push on to ensure that the kid is the most important thing one of the biggest changes for me as a player to a coach was that i think to put that perspective on the opposite side as a player it was all about me and as a coach it is all about them i think when that perspective is changed i think everything is perfectly all right so i i just mentioned uh, having to get into various roles there was a lot of criticism a lot of things happening around so but i was fortunate that they were every time i was pushed to a wall and had a question i had my players performing so that gave me the inspiration to go on and push and uh, i have a um, a mother who's very pushy <laughs> still <laughs> really uh, and um uh, i i think i have a family support which has been fantastic i think my wife um, lets me uh, have my way in a lot of things so that's also very important because i i uh, if not that case it would have been really tough um uh, but uh, the 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 challenge for us um and i'm sure all of us have different uh, challenges is to ensure that this entire system starts to work in tandem because um today when we look at the coaching framework uh, and this is something which i have proposed to the government and nandan has been instrumental in putting all of those things together today what hap- what is happening in our country is that we are having lot of coaches with the chief coach being the head of them that's the kind of a l- hierarchy which we are having 
but what we really need and the Dronacharya award supposed to be the highest award for coaches is given to the coach who trains the Olympic medalists or the highest level of athletes. What is happening is that at the grassroots level, a coach is producing a certain player. He wants to hold on to the player longer because his identity is the player. So nobody, even if he's capable or not, he still wants to hold on to that player. We all have to get to an understanding, and this is uh, where I think it's very important to devise a system wherein it is rewarding for coaches to give away players, to understand that if you are good at the grassroot level, you should be the world's best grassroot level coach. And grassroot level, intermediate level, and advanced level or competition level, if there were three stages, it should be that each one by himself is a world class coach. It is not that these are one below the other, it is they are parallel setups which are there and each one is the head of each of these one. And so if an Olympic coach is paid a certain amount of money, I think the gra best grassroots level should be paid an equal amount of money or probably even more amount of money. And he should be motivated and happy to work in that zone because he is good in that zone. It doesn't happen in education that the best primary teacher tries to do a PhD program as well. He doesn't go along with the student all the way. He stops and sends the next bunch of kids to that level. We in sport don't do that. For the only reason that our awards are given to the top guy, our rewards are given to the top guy, and the recognition is given to the top guy. We need to get these things in such a way that every level of one starts to hand over them and feel the pride of handing over and should feel the reward of handing over. Every time he passes more to the next level, he should be rewarded for that. And if somebody wins an Olympic medal at the highest stage, he should be rewarded for that. I think if that fundamental shift is changed, I think it will be really wonderful. Today, many organizations talk about funding athletes with a lot of pride. We have done this, this, this. How many organizations have actually taken the foot forward and funded coaches? If you produce one coach, you would have produced somebody for 40 years, 50 years. If somebody is a coach at 30, he could be coached till 70. You invest in an athlete, probably it's a 10-year one. So it's very important that you keep nurturing coaches. You ensure that the coaches are going on a platform which they're motivated till the end. They document it and pass on to the next generation. That's something which is very, very important. As I said, blame or praise is only after. At the same time, in the sense, at this stage I talk, but I think... Um, In, in every step of the journey, I think it's important that we document these things, which I have not, so I'm feeling guilty of it, because I don't know, except myself in my mind, which has very little memory, I don't know how an eight-year-old Sindhu was when she was in 2004, I just remember vaguely but I don't have the statistics to back. So if there is a kid in a remote village at eight who's even better than her, or a 15-year-old who's better than Kashyap, or a 13 or a 14-year-old who's better than Sindhu, Saina, I don't have the statistics. I think it's time to document these things as coaches, as systems. But the fundamental thing which we need to change is to re reverse this entire table to a coach-centric, coach top program. Today just imagine 
if if somebody were to go, you are a coach in an organization, and just for reference, I'll take say the Sports Authority of India. Somebody goes in with a complaint against the coach, and it's the association, or it's the member, or it's the player. The coach is immediately says a charge sheet or transferred. And after two times, the coach is saying, "Okay, it's not worth it. Just leave it." So you've really killed the spirit of the coach. You've killed a coach for 40 years just by an administrator who's not capable of handling it. So I think it's very important that we have to start nurturing coaches. It cannot be that the administrators are on top of the coaches. We have to ensure it's the other way around. We cannot have press and players and sometimes to nowadays judiciary. I think getting into the system, I think it's important that coaches become the central force behind driving policy, behind driving the entire system. I think it's something which needs to be pondered on. Today, we have systems which are addressing a lot of things. For athlete, there is a system. For associations, there is a system. But for coaches, there's really nothing. Because you have coaches associations, they're going in with requests like, you don't transfer me here, or you raise my pay scale, or you ensure that there is a permanent job. That is where our level is at the moment. We need to move ahead so that they are able to kind of put policies in place. We are able to put, ed, ensure that administrators are doing their job correctly. I think it's something which is fundamentally very, very important. Um, I think um, more than this, I don't have anything else uh, at the moment to say, but um, I, I am I am very happy that this event is happening the way it is and uh, whatever bits of information more I will definitely be available uh, in the next sessions. Um, it's fantastic to see all of you here. My, uh, my takeaway whatever has been in the years is that I remember when we went in 2000 for the Olympics, maybe 5% of them went to win. And today, 95% of them go there to win a medal. That's the one fundamental shift in the Indian psyche which has happened. So if we provide the athletes good training facilities and just support them a bit, they will shine on their own. We don't have to work too hard also. Having said that, I think, uh, Nandan, there were a few points which you had mentioned about athletes and the struggles. I think if we look at some points, yes, we have athletes who, are, who have problems. But honestly, I think what we get is sometimes a lot. We are a nation which pampers our stars way beyond, and we hardly take care of our grassroots athletes as much. So I think it's important to put this in perspective. No country in the world gives permanent jobs to them. No company, no, no country in the world uh, has the kind of exposure trips which India has for its top athletes. So we are in some ways, yes, true what you said, but also we are in some ways just going overboard on some of these things uh, with so many of us talking in the direction. So I think it's important to balance all of them. It is important that our sports sciences, which is so very important, is pushed to the next level. Our Olympic athletes, our Olympic coaches, our Olympic trainers have to be paid higher amounts of money. We cannot have our scientists uh, who work for high performance, train, uh, get, uh, or at coaches who train high performance athletes be paid one tenth of what is being paid to a gym trainer who does weight loss programs. I think that that ratio needs to be changed. We need to understand all of these, get into situations, but I think it's very important that uh, 
we should have uh, platforms with experienced people around who are able to drive policy and that is uh, the fundamental thing. It's wonderful have, coming here and seeing all of you. Um, uh, all of what I have said is only um, my humble submissions in a way to say uh, from the years of experience for the 10 years, but I'm sure there are coaches here who have spent much more than that and who have great experiences more than it. The tide can change at any time is what I've realized. I think it just needs to be that we need to be positive and keep working. And the negatives are only temporary. If we keep pushing, we will definitely get the results. We just need to be positive and keep keep our motivation levels and positivity up so that um, we are able to take bigger challenges and not run away from those challenges. Because in these years, I have jumped into coaching with nothing. I remember my friend Lancy, I don't know if Lancy remembers at one time, he had said, if I win the All England, probably I would get up at 9 o'clock, have a cup of tea, read newspaper, and come at 11 o'clock, play a bit of squash, and then go back home. That's what my idea was of winning the All England then. But uh, things have obviously changed a lot, lot uh, from then on. But uh, I think if we close our eyes and jump, and then figure, try to figure out work, it's worked with me. I think we just need to keep pushing, and there are a lot of ways um, nature will help us. I think it's fine. Thank you very much. Um, it's really nice uh, speaking to all of you. Thank you.